Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now we are on the cusp of the turning of another new year and as we speed towards what lies ahead, many of us will be reflecting upon what's happened in the past. Many will be thinking about the future and goals that we intend to set ourselves. And it's around about this time of year that many of us embark upon this time-honoured adventure of setting ourselves some New Year's resolutions, which are all great. They make you feel ambitious for the year ahead. But then, as we approach the end of the year, and we reflect upon those goals that we set ourselves, we often find ourselves feeling a little bit crestfallen because we realise we didn't get anywhere near those resolutions that we set ourselves and, you know, they fell off within perhaps a few days, weeks or months of the year beginning. Now, as I look back upon my life and think about, you know, those resolutions that I set for myself, I realise that the reason most of them failed to arrive at a successful conclusion for me is because they were often um, you know, decided upon in the heat of the moment, they were quite general, they were not very specific, they weren't very planned out how I was going to achieve those resolutions and that's why they ended in failure. Now, Everybody has a different reason for not, you know, being successful with their resolutions. It may be personal, but generally speaking, I think when you look back upon the resolutions that you set yourselves, it's because you couldn't bring your motivation and your focus to bear upon them because you really didn't plan them out very well. I stopped attempting to set myself New Year's resolutions quite a few years ago because I realised that they never ended in a positive outcome. And actually, when the, the year rolled on, I felt a bit worse about myself within those themes that I was looking at than I did the year before because I, I hadn't got any further forward. Instead of a New Year's resolution, now every year I undertake a process of life auditing. Right? So life audit is a way that allows you to look at the things which are important in your life that you seek to improve on, that you seek to see positive uh, inroads into that sort of theme. And it allows you to bring your focus, your attention and your motivation to bear on these different topics of life. The topics can be varied depending on whatever you seek to, to include in your life audit. It can be things like career, it can be you know, relationships, and so on and so forth. Now, the word audit is something which is quite important to this process, because audit basically means an examination of accounts. And of course, we're all familiar with the term audit when it comes to financial matters. But if you apply that same clinical auditing process to your ordinary daily life with a goal to look at where you are and look at where you could be if you applied some some positive thinking to it, that's where I think the auditing process works very well when it comes to the application of your life. You might find it as valuable as I have found it in moving myself forward as well. So let me tell you how you could go about undertaking a life audit too. Now the first thing you're going to need when you embark upon your life audit is some uninterrupted time, all right? Because it's a thinking process, right? It's not going to be any good if you try to do this in the corner of the room when the kids are running around, they're screaming, they're shouting, or when you're in work and you're likely to be distracted every five minutes by the telephone going off. This is an important thing. A life audit is something which has the power to improve the quality of your life in any number of different areas. So I suggest that you set aside at least one hour, maybe one to two hours is more realistic, where you're not going to be distracted and I would recommend it's away from the work environment, maybe away from the home environment if you don't have an interrupted piece. So set yourself some time. The other thing you're going to need to bring to the life audit process is brutal, unadulterated honesty with yourself. All right, you have to bring that. There, don't even think about bringing excuses to this process about why you haven't achieved the things that you have sought to achieve in the past. It is far more meaningful if you come to the process with total honesty. 
And that's all I will say to you. Just don't think this is about, you know, covering your ass and saying, the reason why I haven't achieved this is X, Y, and Z. You haven't achieved it because you haven't achieved it, all right? Bring honesty. And finally, you need a way to document your life auditing process. This is not something that you can do in the mind, all right? You need some process of writing it down and capturing it. Now, for me, um, I'm a big fan of journaling, all right? I use a journal, different types of journals for different things in my life. I've got a health journal, uh, I've got a day-to-day -day journal, I've got a YouTube journal. This is the one here. But for me, I like to write things down because there is something for me in the physical connection of a pen on paper. I am committing my thoughts into something physical. Now, of course, you could say, you know, writing something on a word processor, you know, or maybe on an app on your telephone, or even voice recording something achieves the same goal. But actually, for me, a journal, I think, is the way that a life audit comes alive because it's written down, you can refer back to it easily, it's committed into a physical form that you can see, you can touch, you can feel. That's the way I would recommend it. Get yourself a journal for your life audit. Now, we're ready to begin our actual life audit and there are four simple steps of a audit process. Step number one is identify the broad areas of your life that you want to audit and improve. So these can be entirely pertinent to your life. For me, and I'll tell you exactly the areas which I audit every year, it's my career, my physical health, my mental health, my finances, my relationships, my hobbies, my self-development, and travel. These are eight simple areas that I audit every year because they're important within my life and they are areas which I would seek to improve. Now, your uh, life journey may have given you entirely different areas of interest. I would suggest there are some of those areas which are gonna be relevant to all of us. You know, if you're single, for instance, you might have one of those areas as romance. It's entirely relevant for you. But when we have identified the pertinent areas that we intend to audit, we will have completed step one. We are now on our way. Now, step number two is looking forwards, all right? Step number two is quite important. It's where we identify the perfect scenario for us in each one of those areas, which we've just said is very important to us. So let us say, for instance, we look at career. We write our career down at the top of our page and we say, right, this is my perfect scenario, my dream situation. And it might be, you know, I want to be the director of the company. I want to achieve a, 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 an annual income of £100,000 per year by the time I'm 40. It might be as simple as that. But what I would say to you is this is where the devil is in the detail. When you're looking at that perfect scenario, if we're going to plan how to get there, what we need is detail. So don't just say, you know, if, if it's fitness, for instance, say, you're not gonna just say, I wanna be a little bit fitter. What I would want you to do is in your perfect scenario, I want you to write down exactly how fit you want to be. If you say, I want to run a marathon, by the time that I am 40, and uh, in, a, in a set amount of time. Take it to that level of detail. Don't just say, I wanna be fitter. Say, I wanna run a marathon, and I wanna run it in four hours, 30 minutes, by the time I achieve my 40th birthday. That, for you, might be a perfectly achievable, perfectly realistic goal. Set your own guidelines. If it's your career, you might say, I want to be running my own department in this business inside of five years. Uh, and, you know, maybe put some career progression points in there. I want to achieve supervisor level, junior manager level, director level, within a time frame. Because if you're being specific, it will allow you to actually plan towards that goal. But this is really blue sky thinking. I hate these terminologies. But basically what you're doing is identifying the perfect scenario for you. It can be anything that's relevant to you. Okay, so step number three. It's not going to be a surprise to you if you can guess where this progression is taking us. Because step number one, we identify the areas that we want to improve in. Step number two, we have uh, actually mapped out what our goal is at the end. Step number three is actually embarking upon the journey. We are planning our, our, 
our journey to that destination. It's really as simple as that. What we're going to do is put as much detail as we can into that destination where we're aiming for. And we're planning it. We are just effectively planning how we're going to get there. And you know, we're, we're going to talk about where we are now, of course we are, and we're going to talk about how we're going to get to that destination. Now, I'm going to share with you my own uh, or one of the areas in which I've done a life audit upon myself. And it's about self-development, an area which I'm quite passionate about. And it's about just one area of self-development because you can uh, include as much as you want in your life audit to satisfy your desires to get to that improved situation. Now, in my life audit, I've identified my present situation. And I've put, I presently read about two books per month. I usually read one non-fiction and one fiction title, which are selected at random. I do not employ any recording process of the books that I read and I undertake no review process following the completion of the books that I have read. So that's where I am at the moment. That is essentially how I approach my self-development when it comes to learning information through reading. It's a sort of subtopic of self-development. There could be any number of different areas, but this one is my reading ambitions. So my future ambition and my mission to get there, all right? So, my future ambition is to read three to four books per month. And I aim to continue the non-fiction fiction split of one-to-one. -one. So, read one non-fiction, one fiction. That's the plan. Additionally, it is my intention to select all of my reading material from the Times newspaper bestseller list. So I'm going to be reading information that other people have selected as being the best available on the market at the moment. And that's going to be my default. That's where I'm going to choose my books from unless I receive a quality recommendation from elsewhere. So if I encounter somebody who says, this is a really great book, you need to read it, that's the direction I'll be going in. This is my ambition. And as you can see, I'm mapping it out at the same time here. Um, I will maintain a running list of all the books that I have read in my journal, and I will write a meaningful review of each book after I've completed reading it. So at the moment, I read a book and it just goes in the bookcase. From this point on, I'm going to record the books that I read, and I'm then going to write a meaningful, a meaningful being useful, relevant, could be shared with somebody else, review in my ongoing journal. So that I am capturing my thoughts and I am committing my thoughts again into a physical format. It helps in the learning and imprinting process. And to go further, I will consider joining an online book club if I'm able to identify one which meets my needs. Or I may even consider setting up an online book club myself, if I was able to identify sufficient like-minded individuals who would want to share that with me. So I've talked about where I am right now, and I've talked about my ambition for the future and how I'm going to get there. And finally, I've put a time frame because a time frame is important. You know, we've got to have a goal. Some of the things we're talking about here could be, you know, a life ambition. Uh, and my time frame says ongoing to be reviewed on a rolling six monthly basis uh, for any fine tuning or adjustments as needed. So that is my, one of my self-development life audit ambitions. Straightforward, quite simple you might say, but that's how I do a life audit in each one of the different areas of my life which I've identified as being important. Now for you it might be totally different. You know, as I say, your ambition to maybe perhaps um, become a better, fitter person might suggest that you will, you know, say where I am today. I'm not very fit at all. I'm sat on a, on a, on a, on a couch, but it's my intention to get up to 10 kilometers in, uh, you know, 10 kilometer running condition within six months or 12 months. But then you map it out. You will say to achieve that, I will uh, join a local running club, which has a, uh, you know, a beginner running program. I will uh, join or download uh, a Couch to 10K app on my phone. I will buy myself a sports watch, which will allow me to track my process, uh, progress. I will initiate a health journal, which will allow me to keep track of my running process in a book if you don't use you know, an electronic version of it. Um, I will aim in three months' time to have achieved a five-kilometer uh, running capability. I will join a local park run 
After six months, I will be running 10 kilometers. I'm going to enter a 10 kilometer running race within the next 12 months, and it is my intention to run 10 kilometers in under one hour. Now, that is a really good life audit. It says what you want to do, where you are at the moment, and what your goal is for the future. And it maps out a mission in how to get there. That is a really good plan. Now, step number four, the final step, the easier step, is to review your process. So, you know, your life audit is a living thing. After six months, you might do a mid-year mid audit. You might look at it and say, okay, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on track. I may, I may need to make some adjustments, do a bit of finessing, but I'm happy with the way my process progress is unfolding. Or you may need to make some little adjustments. You might think, okay, I'm not where I need to be. I need to perhaps put a bit more effort in here, amend it slightly. Do you see how this works so much better than a New Year's resolution in which you're just throwing a headline title out there saying, this is what I want to achieve, and that's it. You're not actually doing any planning in it. With a life audit, you're taking it seriously. It is a New Year's resolution on steroids, and you have a much more likely chance of achieving at least some significant improvement, even if you don't achieve your goal. You'll have learned a bit more about planning in your own life, you learn about the benefits of journaling, how that can improve you, uh, and hopefully you'll have made some significant strides towards achieving that final destination of you know, your goal. Now be conscious, many of these, uh, you know, these, these targets we set ourselves, they may be very long term. They may be five years. They may be a lifetime of work. So the life audit process is an ongoing and living process. It's not over and done in a year. We don't fail if we haven't achieved it after 12 months. It's realistic. We're setting these targets and we will make some inroads towards that destination at the end. Okay, folks, so that's what I do instead of a New Year's resolution. I think you'll agree that a life audit offers many benefits when it comes to improving yourself in all different areas of life. It's all going to be entirely different for you, wherever you're coming from, wherever your background is, whatever you, whatever stage of life you're at, uh, but it's relevant. You know, think about it, it's just an alternative to just making these throwaway comments at the beginning of a new year and then feeling a little bit downhearted when you never actually make those improvements that you set yourself. At least with a life audit, you're going to make some meaningful steps forward. I hope it will bring you some some success in the future. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like this, click the red button, subscribe. If you'd like to practically support the channel, you can do that by buying me a coffee. And you'll find the link on how to do that in the show notes below. I deeply agree, appreciate that. Uh, so, I will leave you there on the turning of a new year. And perhaps you will employ the life audit process to make your life a little more successful, a little better in 20. 23. If you do, let me know. I would be delighted to hear how it's worked for you. So until the next time, take care of yourselves and I will see you again very soon.